And, uh, and then that team, we had so much fun writing the songs that we continue to write, this, write more songs than the 12 that were on the album. Uh, figuring that the label, which was uh, Republic, would uh, pick up for a second album. So they did. <laughs> Much to our consternation, they didn't pick up for the second album. But we had like 20 songs written. Now, I'm coming slowly to the belief that we're all connected, but I mean, I mean, intertwined. I mean, there's a theory about the basic building material of, of, the, of the universe, which is called string theory. And it's like all these little strings, vibrating strings, are intertwined, which would explain a couple of things, like coincidence. There's no coincidence, because everything is vibrating, and what happens over here affects what happens over here. So, like, I feel I have parking karma. <laughs> I go to a restaurant, and I mean, more than 50% of the time, somebody pulls out of the curb, and I go in, and I'm right beside the restaurant. It's miraculous. Like, <laughs> like the universe is taking care of us. So, we had 20 songs that we thought we would use for the second album, which they didn't pick up, when the people at Kennedy Center said, would you perform uh, for an hour at Kennedy Center, April 29th? I said, I've got material. <laughs> the universe is taking care of me. So, for example, uh, uh, I'm going around, but I'm, uh, it, I've got a path in my mind. If I forget the path, I'll ask you to remind me. So, I'm in New York doing something, and Rob, the, the lyricist, this beautiful poet, uh, is living in New York City, and Dan is living upstate New York, so I say, hey guys, come down, let's go eat a meal. Uh, a, a dinner on Sunday night in New York, because Monday morning, I gotta go to the Texas desert. They've asked me to come a, a day early for this journey into space that I'm going to make. So Dan and Rob and I are having dinner, and somebody, one of them, the other two says, you know, we should write a song about space. So, yeah, so what's it going to be like? What, what do you think? So, start to imagine, well, it's going to be this, and it's going to be that, and we write down ideas, and Rob is looking down, because the whole song, the whole idea of Bill, the, the album that's out there now, and the idea of the album that was going to be, was personal experiences. For example, um, keep me on track, because I, <laughs> a lot of a lot of threads going on here. For example, on Bill, the album, there's uh, all the songs pertain to things that I have done, and we made songs out of them. So one of the songs, for example, is the time I left home in Montreal, where I'd been I'd been at the university, and I had been an actor for many, many years in an amateur way. And now I was seeking my fortune. And Toronto in Canada is the New York of Canada. When you want to perform, you want to do well. Uh, I lived in Quebec, so the English speaking world was Toronto. Montreal was the center of this French speaking world. So I was on my way to Toronto. And I'm crossing a bridge in this little cheap English car that I, $300 car, $400 car that I could afford. I'm crossing a bridge, probably over the St. Lawrence River, and coming at me all of a sudden was an 18-wheeler, huge truck. And you know how they push that pillow of air in front of it? Well, in a little cheap car, that pillow of air moves you over. And I almost went over the side of this bridge, and I just I got around it, and I was safe, and I crossed the bridge. 
The song is about we're always crossing a bridge. And there's always an 18-wheeler coming at us. And that's the song. I mean, it's really delightful. So, if I do say so myself. So, we're writing this song about space. See, I've, I've caught up, I've got the other three. Okay. So we're writing this song about space, but I hadn't been up there yet. So, and then that Monday, I went, I'm there a day early. Everybody else is coming on a Tuesday for like a, a Thursday lift up. And, and I'm there a day early. Why, why am I there? They're a day early, but I'll go anyway. So we write down our impressions of what it's like to be up in space. On Thursday, when I come back down, one of the first phone calls I made was to Rob and Dan. Rob and Dan, everything we wrote that Sunday evening about what it would be like in the space, forget about it. <laughs> Nothing like it whatsoever. So then we wrote a song called So Fragile, So Blue. And it'll be part of my performance April 29th at the Kennedy Center, which is a week after Earth Day. And So Fragile, So Blue is very much about what I experienced in that Texas desert when I went into space. Well, they, 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 they called me there a day early. Uh, I, I got there Monday morning after that Sunday night. And I thought, what? Why am I here a day early? What the? So they, they, they had, it's very primitive. It's nothing like Kennedy Center. Uh, I was staying in a, um, in one of those uh, toad uh, homes. What is it, the silver? Uh, what's it? A Quonsita. No, no, no. <laughs> Not at all. I appreciate your help, but you're on the It's an airstream. The airstream. The airstream. Oh, what kind of help is that? That's no help. I got people I hire that give me that kind of help. I don't know. Airstream. 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 What's in here? Airstream. Air, air. Stream. Stream. Airstream. Airstream. Anyway, you know what I mean. So they, 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 have a staying there. So I'm in that little thing, and the air got out of it. Air free. Free. And, <laughs> and so it's like primitive. So I'm thinking, why, why am I here on Monday? And we're coming up Tuesday. So they say, oh, Bill, it's good to see you. Yeah, we'll have to get used to the thing. Oh, all right, Bill. So what do you say? We drive to the gantry. So, okay, we we'll drive to the gantry. It's about 10 miles down the road. All this land is owned by Jeff Bezos, who's Amazon, who's Blue Orbit, or Blue Origin. So we drive to the gantry. Wow, wow, look at that. There's a gantry. The, the, uh, the, uh, can't walk. Uh, tube, the, the rocket was still lying flat over there being, uh, gassed up with, uh, Hydrogen. It's being gassed up with hydrogen. I don't know whether all of you know what I'm about to say, but there's a documentary that appears all the time with the Hindenburg. Dave Holloway. A lot of nods there. Good. Well, let me describe the documentary on the Hindenburg. It's like 300 foot feet long, okay? And it's and, and, and it came from Germany, came across the ocean, and landed in New Jersey in the late 1930s. Zeppelins, lighter than air vehicles, that was the coming thing. Passengers stayed in staterooms and ate gourmet foods crossing the ocean on this lighter than air vehicle that's filled with hydrogen. So they made many trips, but the one trip that the documentary is about is... <laughs> so they land in New Jersey and they put down a, a rope, which they tie off like it's a floating ship in the air. So they tie it off so you can disembark. The moment that happened, 
static electricity and went towards the back, apparently, where there was a slight leak of hydrogen. And the hydrogen exploded. The documentary looks, you see this giant airship burning. People are running, little dots, people are running away. And there's an announcer who was saying, you know what, here comes the Zeppelin, and, 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 it, and then he sees it burning. And all that comes out of him is, oh my God, the humanity. He's, he doesn't know what to say. This little figures are running away that are burning. Everything's burning. You know why it's burning? It's hydrogen! <laughs> and hydrogen is what they're putting in the rocket. It's still lying on its side. And I still don't know why I'm there early. <laughs> and they say, hey, Bill, why don't you let's walk up the gantry? The gantry is 11 flights up. <laughs> You're at 4,000 something feet, like Denver. And we want me to walk up on like, this there an elevator? <laughs> Do you know how old I am? <laughs> and then I realize why they've got to be there early. <laughs> See if the old fart can walk up a ladder. <laughs> so I walk up three flights. <laughs> oh, look how beautiful the desert is. <laughs> So I'm at the 11th floor. So I'm looking out all this beautiful. And then I see a room about this size. And it's made of concrete. And there's doors open, doors like 12 inches thick. I mean, the walls are 12 inches thick. It's, it's got a seal on it. And I don't mean oh, an art seal, I mean a rubber seal. <laughs> And inside the room are tanks of air. So I'm up there looking down 11 flight, and I say, what, uh, <laughs> what's the room for? And they said, well, in case something goes wrong. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Well, you know, there's hydrogen, <laughs> and you run into that thing, you seal the door, you got air, there's communication. I go, oh, cats. And then I walk out and look down around, and that was it. I mean, I was there that early, and, I, and they never said anything, but I now know they were out to see if I could do it. Okay, so now I'm going to open up to questions, and I'll leave the rest of the story. Till the end. <laughs> okay, what's your question? 